Hi everyone. So I'm Jimmy from Vlogs team in Meta. So today I'm going to give a talk about uh, what uh, what we have done since the last uh, VlogsCon. That the overview of all the optimizations, new features, and uh, reliability features that we put in, like not just uh, from Meta, also from from the open source communities. So that uh, I now organize this uh, this talk into three sections and. Uh, each section are like a very uh, have a, a parade of uh, small like uh, technical details of uh, of things. Uh, so it's a, it's it's a, could be like a, a not not that uh, under one umbrella or something. But uh, if uh, I, so, after each section, I will have a separate Q and A. So if any one of you guys are interested in, in any one of these small like uh, sub areas, can can ask uh, ask uh, after the, after each section. So let's start with this parade of optimizations. And uh, these are uh, the first one I want to talk about is, uh, yeah, these are optimizations that we put mostly put in during our integration with Prestissimo and uh, working on batch workload. So it's, it's all the optimization that works on real world uh, like workload. So that first thing I need to, uh, I want to talk about is this uh, metadata filter. That's a new feature that only exists in, in, in Vlogs. And uh, in, in Presto, that uh, we use metadata for the, mm, that's the column statistics actually. That's uh, for, for very simple, like a tuple domain filters, like a something, one column and a one constant value. So like a C0 minus one, these are, these can be like using, using statistics and we can skip the whole stripe based on this, uh, this uh, statistic. But uh, these are the limitation of that is that uh, we cannot do it for, for complex expressions. So for example, here we have this complex uh, expression is not something like one column is uh, smaller than one and uh, another column is larger than two. So in, in the Presto Java cannot, uh, cannot leverage uh, statistics for that. Now we, inside the VLOX, we do some optimization. Then we push first, uh, we push down all the not to the leaf, leaf level so that then it becomes an or expression. And then for each, for each like class of the, that the or expression, we separately check the, the striped metadata for statistics of that column. So say like a C0 has statistics that the, the range is from zero to 100, then that the big, bigger or equal, larger or equal than one that uh, turns out to be true. And the second, uh, like on C1, we do similar thing, then it turns out to be false. And then we have one, uh, another like a uh, step to, to combine these logical expressions together. Then we know that whether this, Stripe can be skipped or not. So that's, that's some optimization. In this case, it's true, but uh, if it's false, then we can avoid the read the, the Stripe actual Stripe. So that's one. And uh, some other optimization, another optimization is this uh, lazy seeking feature that uh, sometimes we do multiple seeks inside of the file, but we don't actually read the data. So if the seeking is like eagerly done and the underlying stream is compressed, that's the worst case, then we need to do the IO and decompress it. And then, then when we seek it again, without actually reading any data, then that decompression of the IO is based. So, we, so that uh, we, in order at the, at the coder level, it's a similar thing also happens because it's a one level above the stream. And, but the D, at the decoder, for example, IO, you need to read the IOE header and then you need to expand it, say that how, how many repetition of that, uh, of that value. So these are also like a wasted IO and uh, could be compression. So one optimization that uh, we put into to, uh, to, to avoid these things is uh, lazy seeking that uh, we can, when we do, whenever we skip some, 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 uh, some value, how many values or how many bytes, that's two level. At the decoder level, it's how many values we are skipping. At the uh, stream level, how many bytes we are skipping. We keep all these two values in memory, but uh, we are not actually Doing the skipping only we only doing the skipping when we actually read the data so that uh, saves a lot for for certain queries for certain queries like it's reduced from like seven cpu days to like 2.8 cpu days and that second query that the example is like 2.9 cpu days to, to 40 hours another optimization again is from scan because scan is our like biggest chunk like 50 percent of cpu time is on scan so like a major optimization need to happen at the scan 
And uh, yeah, another optimizing is that the remaining filter, like uh, for, for people familiar with uh, uh, Presto, remaining filter is anything that cannot be put in tuple domain. It's, it's expression like evaluated true or false. Like, uh, and that thing is separated with end. And uh, with VLOX, there is a feature that uh, from day one, that's a feature that uh, we can reorder these end and uh, combining with the lazy evaluation, we can do to spark things like uh, put the, the most selective one first and then select breeding the, the rest of them. But there was a bug, but the detail is that, but the, there's the, the evil is in the detail that the, during the, the integration, we find a bug that makes this much less efficient because when that the, the expression is multiple, uh, uh, multi-reference, when in order, like there is, was a bug that uh, if it's multi-reference, that we need to evaluate all like eagerly. So in that case, for example, that case, C1, like uh, module three equals zero or, and uh, uh, C0 module 97 equals zero. Then because it's multi-referenced in order, like in order to prevent some other bugs that uh, that's not happening in this case, we eagerly evaluate C0 so that uh, that end up reading every row. But uh, in, in, in reality, we could like reorder it, like uh, then just to reorder it to, to, to evaluate the C0, uh, like module 97 and, and the second one, and we'll, we'll, we'll be only like read only like a, like three percent of the stuff or one percent of, and to fix this issue like bring us down like three times, like CPU time. So it's another thing that's uh, uh, another optimization that's that's there. Um, it was in Presto, but uh, was not in Velox uh, until like uh, until like May or or June like. Uh, last year that's uh, that's subfield pruning so that's a feature from uh, inherited from presto and uh, uh presto already have but the other engine now because it's in vlox now other engine can also leverage that that's uh, that's a feature of uh, reading complex types like for struct you 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 don't read all the subfields you can read some of them that's already done from day one what well, was achieved by lazy loading because the subfields don't need to be lazy loaded and now we are more smart about uh, now we leverage the information provided by the planner. Planner will figure out like what are the subfields needed, and we just uh, stuff them with uh, no cons. And uh, the the other two are new. Uh, it's map and the for map and the for array. So for map key, like if you only need certain map keys, then the planner was smart enough to figure that out to tell us. And then we just only read those keys. And uh, for that's also a feature. Uh, also a feature in for other all, all, for others for in terms of like uh, machine learning, this is very important because machine learning usually only projects out only certain features. That's called the feature selection. So that's that's also implement that. And also for array, we we usually just uh, read uh, like if we only read a prefix of the array, then we just need to read that many without like dropping all the tails. And then uh, and, uh, and there's optimization that need to be done in VLOX that's missed in during last year is that was that uh, in remaining filter that I just mentioned it. And the, these things need to be extracted, not by the planner because planner don't do this for us. I, I, we need to extract it out and do it ourselves. But, but fortunately it's not hard. And some other optimization that's not related to scan. This one is for mostly for uh, for uh, for aggregation, for the uh, allocation of memory for for the accumulator. So inside of these accumulators, so we the hack string allocator was or originally designed for for allocate like a like a non contiguous like chunk of strings so that uh, we can use as like string array nodes. But uh, but now it's also used for allocate fixed size so like a uh, object inside the uh, particularly inside the uh, uh, aggregation accumulator. So in that case, the, you need to like looking for a specific size. Originally, it was all like chained together using a linked list, and we need to go through all the all, every node on the linked list to to get that thing. And uh, we with uh, we opt optimized it using like a, a sub a size classes, and uh, that size classes because that um, because the the way we arrange it, we only like looking for like a smaller uh, smaller bytes. Smaller, smaller memory inside this uh, free list, so that uh, we we can end up with, we end up with an array of like three thousand uh, like uh, free list. Then we can use constant time, not even like a hash table or anything like just uh, just uh, using the index of that uh, of that size to to get that in constant time. 
So that uh, improvement improved on some like certain aggregation query, like tremendously. It's like like ten CPU days to, to eight hours. Another thing, another major chunk that we did this year is this. Uh, ex uh, we upgraded uh, the exchange protocol of uh, Presto from. Uh, originally, we were using the Presto Java uh, Exchange Protocol. That one was was designed for a smaller cluster, I would say, because that uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a only like an extend request uh, for some uh, the, the for from consumer to uh, to the producer, but uh, it will wait for that request for two seconds, and then if anything and if producer have anything, then return uh, return the data. Otherwise, we we return some empty. And then, then that two seconds is wasted. So that uh, in, in case like a, a, in case the most of the producers are not producing, only one of them is produced. We cannot, but because of memory limitations, we cannot like query all the producers at the same time. Because if, what if they all return large chunk of data? Then you are you are out of memory. So we we only have a, like a window of like a ten or twenty of them, or and we need to take a round or two to query them. And if they are not, they, there is no data to be produced, and as two seconds is wasted on each turn. So that's that's the, the inefficiency coming from. So we we upgrade the protocol to a two phase protocol. That the first that we send some requests to to query each each producer, like how many data are ready on your on your like on each producer. So that one is small. So the response of that is very small, so that we can send it to all the producers. Then we have a global view of uh, of what the data are. How, how they are distributed over the producers. Then we send a second request to, to actually fetching the data. And then while we actually fetching the data, the, the producers still can send this, uh, this information about the remaining, um, how many bytes, bytes are remaining, uh, so, so that we don't need to repeatedly send it during these two phases. Just uh, send it once and then streaming the CGR streaming data until that uh, there is no data, so that then we switch. So that one is very, uh, Reduce that with that thing with that optimization, then the, the wall time of some queries are improved significantly. Like for 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 one example, it's fifty six minutes on a, say six hundred node. Like we managed to do it within like ten minutes on on four hundred node. Another thing, like back to to scan, is that the table sampling that uh, that table sampling push down. So in the Impresto, we have table sampling that's at the row level. Uh, each row is doing an independent Bernoulli trial, and uh, if it uh, decide whether this row is sampled or not. But uh, with uh, with lazy loading, it's not so bad that uh, we because we we will evaluate that uh, that uh, like a random function smaller than something first, and get a bit mask and use that bit mask to to read the the actual data. Like uh, it's not all the rows are are actually readed, but uh, in some cases the stripe metadata still need to be read. That's 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 something that we we discovered is very painful. It's if someone is more interested in it, it's the flat map format. That the, the stripe metadata flat map format is super large. That the, we 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 want to avoid it. If the sampling ratio is so low that the whole stripe can be skipped, we won't skip it. So that uh, so that we but there is a like a well known like a fact that the Bernoulli the Bernoulli distribution can be converted. To, there is a corresponding geometric distribution means that. Uh, uh, whether we uh, whether whether there's a p like percentage of the probability we want to sample that row, we can convert to that uh, like we need to skip k rows before before sampling that row. So with that knowledge, then we can say check that if that k rows is larger than the stripe size, if it's larger than that, we can strip that uh, skip that whole stripe without actually reading it. And that has uh, like also have some. Some like uh, interesting side effect uh, that uh, that's one implementation detail of selective reader that we are like uh, generating a list of row numbers for selective reading. So with this, we can we can avoid the, like generating it for all the like uh, all the row all the rows, but only generate those we are select. So that's this also. So for that, uh, the example of that optimization is that uh, some query that uh, never ends that uh, it's timeout in our case was. Reduced like the seven at least seven times. So some other optimization that that one is from the uh, shuffle uh, shuffle formatting. So before we was made uh, shuffle uh, the Presto page was serialized deserialized when we deserialized Presto page the the children of the vector need to be deserialized first because yeah you, when you construct the vector you 
you, you, you need the children and you need the parent and you need the parent. But uh, there is a bug in our code, in our code that, uh, and, and, the, these, uh, and the, when you deserialize the children, you, you will deal with the bug that we don't consider the parent nodes, so that we, we serialize the children, but the parent nodes are, are, should be scattered into the children. But we don't do that, and we, we scatter that at each level when we do that. Then we, and the insertion in these, insertion of nodes into these vectors are very expensive. And so we end up, at, and end up doing this insertion on every lay, layer, potentially every layer if they are adding nodes. So and uh, end up with like O n square, like n s dips of the vector tree. They are doing so many insertions. That's, that's very inefficient. So, so the way we solve it is, uh, we already solved it actually in reader. Because we in reader we are not doing this uh, this stupid thing that uh, that insertion every level. So we are keeping track of the parent nodes, and uh, then then when we read the children, we we just uh, do it once to generate the right back. But there is a caveat that the, the nodes in presto page is saved after the after the values. So that there is some tricky part that we need to do the unwinding. That we need to do the read the nodes first, and then unwind them to read the values. Like these are the the implementation needs, but still it's worth doing it. And uh, there are other function, small function optimization, but the individual of them, like uh, uh, it's, it's a very, cover a very small number of queries, but uh, each one of them gives huge improvement. Like uh, something like uh, SIMD JSON, that uh, uh, this one is most shining when there is a malformed input, because before that, before SIMD JSON, we were using the Foley like a JSON library, but the, that one is forced you to throw an exception on malformed input. And uh, we know that the exception is very expensive. In and uh, you throwing on each row is just disastrous. So with SIMD JSON, we're able to like get a return code. So that's just, like blasting fast. Like in, the, in that case, for, for this like malformed input, the, the improvement is like gigantic at least. And uh, there is also some optimization going to the daytime to string that uh, we discovered uh, there is uh, inefficiency in the, in the gym, gym time R. They are taking a global lock to read something, but uh, that's really not needed. Why, why do we need a time, time zone when we're doing to string in operation? So we re-implement the gym time R and uh, the, 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 the improvements are huge. So that's 10 times, more than 10 times improved. And this, all, we also uh, have this map subscript uh, like uh, uh, optimization. I think Amit al already talked about it uh, like uh, during the during the talk in the morning that uh, we use binary. We uh, first we replace it uh, like a sequential search with the binary search. Then we further optimize this using a hash. So that's uh, that's a four four time uh, performance boost down this. And there is also aggregation of uh, like a reduced ag. That one is most coming from the, the root causes. Uh, uh, as we see that, uh, as we know that the uh, Velox is the interpret engine, that the uh, vectorized interpret engine, and the lambda there is slow, very slow to, to each invocation of lambda is slow. So what we, well, what we used to do with reduce ag is for each element, we, we need to invoke once for that, uh, for, for each element on that boost. So that, uh, but uh, that we, we because reduce ag is, uh, is is across rows and rows are unordered, so that we can reorder them. So it's, uh, and have a, like combination function. It also takes a combination function. So by like reordering them instead of like doing it one by one by one, we organize them into a tree space. Then we can reduce the number of invocation of lambda from the sequence O n to to O log n. That's tremendously. The similar thing we want also want also want to do with reduce, but that one is more harder because it takes array as input and array is ordered by definition. So it's uh, it's a little bit harder to to guarantee that uh, if we 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 reorder the reorder the input that the, the result will be the same. We will see see if we can. And uh, the the last thing is the there is the optimization can go into the constant count distinct of the of complex type. These things, we are putting them into a set, but the, the, the actual data, the bytes, are we, are we are keeping in the hash string allocator. But the, there was a bug in hash string allocator that the, when we read back the these bytes, we, we, we don't give a limit of these things. And the, in this case, it's very long, and they are chained together, have a, like a linked list of these uh, byte ranges, K 
thing together, we are we were forced to read all of them. Even we just like read one byte, we are forced to link, read the whole link list, and uh, re return it back. And then the the call side will only take that one byte from from the first range. So that's that's end up with like a very many, very efficient code. And we we fix that by passing in the limit limit on that uh, prepare read when we prepare read these uh, these ranges. Then we will count how many bytes are are so far are needed. And if it exceeds the limit, then we we don't need to go until the end of. It. So that's uh, that's optimization. Also, there is some optimization because it's it's a hash set. So the hash value, we sometimes we only need to read the hash value, but uh, we we end up because we don't we don't save the hash value there. We end up like uh, reading the, the these byte ranges to recalculate the hash value, and then so we we keep the hash value in the accumulator so that uh, these we don't need to like read actual bytes. To so these are the optimization section. So any questions? With the sampling, you spoke about Bernoulli sampling, but mm -hmm. we also know that you have system sampling in Presto. Yeah, but that's that's at uh, that's done at split level. That never, if it's sampled out, it never reached a worker, right? So that's none of uh, business of uh, VLOC worker level. Okay. And for count distinct, uh, do you recommend using sampling because if the data is very large, so. Yeah, usually if the data is large, that's then we sample it like 0.01% of these. It's are very common in machine learning. But, but how do you know that the sampling rate is correct for the count distinct to be accurate? Do you do some kind of iterative sampling or something? Yeah, I, I did some experiment before and after these things and to see if uh, the, the count is roughly the same. We even have like a unit test. If you check out the code, there are some unit tests I put in that uh, make sure that the, the, the difference is 10% within 10% with, with certain seeds and things like that. You can even like put in random seed to see, see how it uh, fluctuates. Thank you. There was a... Thanks so much. So, so many improvements and maybe some dumb question, but like maybe you could share some experience of how you actually getting to actually finding those improvements. So oh. like profiling, yeah, usually maybe, that, uh, we, we have some query and that's slow, then we run, rerun these queries and we take a CPU profiles. We look at the, the runtime stats, these things that uh, then starting from there, I would say, and uh, see which, which operator is taking most of the CPU and uh, what are they doing and uh, whether this work can be avoided, with, whether this work can be optimized. These are the, the, the speed of oh, Okay. Let's, there's the second section that, uh, for reliability. So we also, that uh, we know that the uh, further is the key, the key role, key player in reliability for, for VLOC so that the, uh, we we make some huge progress on further as well than like for last year. So that the the, the most the shiny part is that the, now we are comparing Presto uh, with ag aggregation further results with Presto Java, so that we get more confident that the, our implementation is the, exactly the same as Java and the, when can do job in replacement. Like we used to compare it with DuckDB because it's it's just easier, and uh, now we. But some difference are expected because uh, there could be some different semantics. Um, uh, uh, for example, like Q or some these these kind of aggregate functions. I, I think they have been different semantics. In fact. And to get like 100% confidence, we need to check the result with Presto Java. So the way we do it, we spawn up a Presto Java separate process and talk it with the end, SDB endpoint, say like this is the query and this is the data, like give me the result. And then we parse it using this, parse the, then they send back the press of pages and we parse the press of pages and compare results with whatever that we calculate in VLOG. So that that uh, give us like 
boost of the confidence of how, how these things should uh, it's working correctly. So similar thing could also be done with Spark. So and also for expression further and like. Yeah, another thing is that uh, we also do, we also have like a more control over the input data uh, for, for the furthers. Before we are like gener just a uniformly randomly generate over the whole universe for the, for the thing, for, for these further, for the, these furthers. But uh, most of the time, these are like uh, invalid inputs. We are not uh, actually testing the, the, the actual code path. And, uh, but uh, but for, for, for aggregated function, this is mostly severe. This case. Like it's not an action. It's just to get an invalid input except. But uh, now we have this, uh, this uh, customized input that you can generate uh, like 20% of invalid input and 80% uh, of the, the actual like the, that input that, that makes sense. Then we, we also implement this for, for, the, for the list of uh, aggregate function. And then we can, we can use further test them. So that the, whenever you, you guys you add a new like aggregate function, you should also consider that uh, adding some custom input to, like generate. So furthers are not just for, for functions now. They are they're also for other operators. Like uh, we, we created two kind of new what further for join operator and for exchange operator. So for join ones, we, we compare the result with DuckDB and we generate like uh, all different forms of, uh, of join fans. Like we, sometimes we flip the side, like a, like a flip the side of the join, or sometimes we, we compare it with, uh, with a hash join, compare it with a merge join. So these results are, should, all should be the same. So these are, and we run it with spilling, without spilling, these results should all be the same. So these are the, give us very confidence that, uh, that this, this join operator uh, works well. And we also adding this exchange of uh, further. It's mostly actually not t testing exchange, but it's testing the serialization and the deserialization of, the, of these presto pages. But still, it works that uh, and still it, it, uh, it, it, we're testing the repartition part as well, so that we repartition based on different like uh, partitioning function and then send it over exchange, check the data. The data should be, no miss, no duplicate. This, that that gives us very confidence about the about this the the, the join exchanges. And some tooling, some tooling about uh, about how to debug the things. And the one thing that uh, is painful for us to debug is if the query stuck. What what where are they stuck? And uh, yeah, that uh, that happened once. And uh, with all the threads are stuck. And uh, when we attach uh, like a debugger on it. It, the, the process gets the crash, just get killed. So sometimes this happens. So we decided to put in something that they can periodically print out where these, these threads are. That the, like for every minute, we just print out the world where these threads are. So these are, uh, so with this on hand, we can know that uh, these, something is stuck, say, in, in, in some infinite loop or, or in some like very long like operation. Like there was a bug in, in, in hash probe that, uh, that we, we have like a, uh, we have like severe hash collision that, that only, we only like use one fourth of the hash table and uh, that results in like two like hours of hash, hash building, actually. hours of hash building. That, that's, that's use this thing discovered. Also, we can use this debug like uh, if we are reading some from disaggregate storage because the interface of reading now is, is synchronous. So that we can know that this thread is just stuck there. And uh, another thing is this: uh, we we not just uh, for the for the snapshot of where all the threads are, and we keep a history of all, all where where this thread has been for this inter interesting section. Then then during debug we can we keep the last the sixteen of them, so that the, during the debug we can print out oh, oh this guy has this thread has been like reading this column, reading this column, and then then doing this hash build and. So these, and another thing we're adding is uh, that uh, because of uh, the, the encoding of the uh, inside the VLOX is so complex that uh, we that sometimes people build uh, build like invalid invalid vectors, and it's very hard to debug if if a vector is invalid. So that uh, we adding this validate and it's very versatile and uh, it checks thoroughly, so it checks every kind of uh, vectors that the, that the, the constraint that it should uh, should uh, should uh, obey. And uh, recursively check for the whole tree, 
And it's also extensible that uh, the tech pass around the option that uh, how it should be checked. And uh, you can even plug in like callbacks on each node that actually is. So some questions about this section reliability. Uh, could you elaborate more on the faster compare with Prato Java? Does that mean a query is generated on Velox, then sent to Presto Java, and then get back the result and compare it? Yes, that uh, we, we like generate some, like a, like a select, uh, aggregate, some aggregate function from this data and buy some. And then on the on Presto, uh, on Presto that, that send back the result. And then we do the same thing in Velox. But uh, we generate the query plan in Velox and run that thing and compare the one, the result in Velox with the results sent back from, we get back. That should be this. So this is a module in Velox? This is uh, a, test, a testing module in Velox. I see. So the starting point is still in Velox in C++, right? Yeah, you need to compare, it to compare the result we get from Velox to the result we get from Java. We make sure these are the same. Okay, all right, got it, thanks. So you compare with the Java Presto, but then how is Java Presto validated? Um, the, the, by time, <laughs> it's been there for a while, so if there's any bug or, or like uh, if they're both <laughs> wrong. Well, I, think, yeah. I think it's changing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's changing, then we, we need to track them, yeah. And then, I, mean, I mean, if you went back to DuckDB again, I guess that, that would be your other fallback, perhaps. Yeah, that, DuckDB so. is, we are running both. Yeah, that's what I figured. That was the reason you wanted to get away from that. Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, just uh, just wanted to uh, explain about the so comparison of Velox uh, versus the Presto in the father. So uh, so basically, uh, the purpose of comparing results against the Presto is to make sure that the uh, uh, Velox does the uh, uh, the Presto functions in Velox does uh, produce the semantic semantically uh, equivalent results with Presto. Uh, and then when the result mismatch uh, found by the father, uh, we would investigate like whether the Presto result is correct or Velox result is correct. So we have actually found a few cases where the Presto result is incorrect and we uh, created the GitHub issues on Presto and they have fixed those bugs. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, that's a further uh, result comparison against the Presto actually help both Velox and Presto. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, very good addition. And uh, we even have custom like a validator code that uh, can, can check some of the like a result, because, like something like a, a cross percentile. Because these are non-determinist. You have like custom code to check that yeah, the error bound is within the error bound. And well, one more thing I'd like to add is that this is currently only for aggregate. Uh, we still need to add this for uh, scalar functions and stuff. So, you know, there's a big opportunity, and hopefully, like you know, folks can contribute. So just wanted to add people to contribute to this. Well, I wanted to add that, that saying that you found Presto bugs because Prestissimo happened to implement it correctly and then you saw a difference doesn't compel me to believe then that Presto is such a uh, oracle of truth that, that, you know, just because you get the same result from Presto and then from Prestissimo, it could be getting the, the wrong result twice, right? I mean, you uh, you have yeah, the same you that. have the same broken would, implementation because you copied the implementation. So anyway, yeah, I would that, say the chance of both are wrong, are, and they are wrong in the same. Isn't, isn't the chance of both wrong actually not that uncommon? Because didn't you didn't you build? You might actually have gotten the implementation design by looking at the way yeah, Presto was implemented. In the design. And so it's then you copied the case. broken design. It isn't like you grabbed Oracle or something else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So last section, new features. So we are adding the table mutability. Like Ying has already talked about iceberg. So internally, we are also using uh, adding mutability for, for our warehouse, data warehouse. And uh, yeah, these are sharing the same framework. And uh, if the efficiency is the key here, but the one is very efficient. And also, these are the continued efforts that uh, coming from like beginning of the logs at the uh, Decimo and the uh, Window Phone. Okay. 
that's it for my you guys